Uh, if you don't know me, I'm just going to do a, a quick little about me. So uh, I am an extension forestry and research specialist here at the University of Illinois, and my uh, kind of focal areas are forest management, uh, restoration, and then dealing with invasive species. Um, is kind of really what I like to focus on. I've been in Illinois about 17 years now, um, uh, Kentuckian and, and farther south um, before that. And I'm definitely a professed native plant nerd. So I really love dealing with plants, taking photographs of plants um, and everything related to that, uh, and especially trees. And so this is kind of right up my alley, um, getting out there and trying to learn as many of the trees as I can, trying to uh, uh, figure them out and then really just help people uh, understand trees. So I really enjoy it. If you're interested in kind of Illinois trees and, and, and native trees and, and seeing neat pictures, uh, feel free to follow our Instagram, which is at Illinois trees. And I think Zach's gonna put a, a link to it there in the chat box. But we try to, to highlight um, native trees and, and neat things um, throughout the year. Uh, but this workshop does cover all the oaks in Illinois. Um, kind of way we're looking at doing this, we're going to start with a little bit about diversity and, and distribution of, of oaks kind of worldwide as well as in Illinois, uh, oak ecology and kind of their importance to our ecosystems. Uh, and then kind of what are some characteristics you look at when you're doing general tree identification and then what are the characteristics that you need to kind of narrow that down to oaks and then in particular, how do you tell red oaks from white oaks? So I'm hoping that that whole section takes 50 minutes, uh, maybe an hour or something like that. And then we'll have an opportunity for a quick break, uh, you know, maybe a 10 minute break, something like that, um, and answer some questions at that point. And then we're going to jump into the, the meat of the, the workshop. And that'll take up the rest of the time, which is going species by species, looking at all the, the different oak species that are native to Illinois, how to identify them or its habitat, where they distributed across the state, right? So it should be um, really detailed, I'm hoping, on all of these species. And we have a lot of species, so there's a lot to cover. Um, I do apologize. I've got a little bit of a cold, so I might have to stop every once in a while to cough or, or, or take a drink. I apologize for that, but you just have to bear with me for that. Uh, this workshop is being recorded, as I mentioned earlier. And we're going to make it available as a playlist on our uh, our YouTube channel. So Zach's going to put a, a link to that YouTube channel in the in the chat box now. But it uh, it's where we really store a lot of our, our webinars and our other um, video uh, offerings out there, our, our publications. So currently we have about 110 videos and the majority of those are, are you know, kind of full length webinars. Um, so it's a great resource if you're looking at just learning more about natural resources and forestry. So just so you know that, but that's where this, uh, this workshop, the recording of this workshop will be housed uh, and it'll take a few weeks to get it up there. But all right, that's out of the way. Let's talk about oaks, right? So oaks in Illinois. So just a little bit to start right off the bat about oaks ta taxonomy. Um, when we talk about oak trees, we're talking about members in Illinois, oak trees in Illinois, uh, members of the, the Quercus genus, right? So that's a, one genus within the Fagaceae family. And so all of our oaks fall into that Quercus genus. Um, and so that's where they're all, they all fit but they're in this larger beech family. Um, and so there's a few other species that fall into that Fagaceae or that beech family. So in the Eastern United States, um, in that same family, you'll find beech trees uh, as well as um, chestnuts and chinkapins, right? And so chinkapin is uh, just a, a shrubby version of a chestnut in that case. And then if you get out West, you add tan oaks and then a different chinkapin uh, genus over there as well. So there's really not a lot of species, not a lot of, of genera for this family, even though it's a very dominant family numbers wise in terms of trees, right? So oaks are, are very dominant, especially in the Eastern United States, uh, but, but elsewhere as well. But that's the family that it falls in, right? And it's not surprising. So Chestnuts, chinkapins, and beech are also kind of hard mast nut producing trees. And so it's not surprising that they, there's a lot of similarities. So they all fit in the same family. 
But just speaking worldwide, um, there's only about 500 species of Quercus of oaks uh, worldwide, and they do occur worldwide, but the center of their diversity uh, is in Mexico, right? So 160 some species of, of those 500 occur in Mexico. Uh, in the United States, we have around 90 species. And you can see on the right there, just three um, species that do not occur in Illinois, but occur in the, the eastern United States, in the southeastern United States. Blue jack oak, uh, live oaks, which I'm sure you're all familiar with from all the Spanish moss hanging off of them, and then running oak. And I put that one in there because it really is a tiny three foot tall shrub, right? So it's a clonal growing tiny shrub. And so you can really see the diversity of oaks in terms of their growth forms. Um, in Illinois, we have 21 species of oak native to Illinois. And if you listen to my presentation this spring, you'll notice I said 20. And so now I've, I've bumped that up to 21 through some great information from uh, true oak experts, um, and especially Guy Sternberg from Star Hero Arboretum, kind of gave me some good information about uh, a, a species that uh, is found very rarely in Illinois, and there's a lot of confusion. So the dwarf chinkapin oak but gave me some great information about a location of it in the state. So we, now we have added that to our species list. So it's 21 species. And that's kind of, they're found and they're largely broken into two major groups, right? There's a section called Quercus, which is nine species, and then another section, Robate, which is 12 species. So it's the, the white oaks, we call them, and the red oaks. And so that we're going to talk about that quite a bit later. But overall, they're very distinct and they're kind of separated into those two groups. And our, our 21 species do vary a lot in size, vary a lot in form and, and growth. So we have everything from, you know, kind of shrubby, short, uh, bushy uh, oaks, such as blackjack oak here, which is, this, you know, these are mature trees that are about eight feet tall. Um, all the way up to the tall, towering, you know, 130 foot tall white oaks like this beauty right here, right? And so a lot of variation, a lot of diversity in the oaks um, here in Illinois. But we do have quite a few that get really big. And so just highlighting some of the bigger individual oaks um, that you may be familiar with or may not be familiar with. Uh, these are some gems that occur here in Illinois. So this is our state champion cherry bark oak. And it is almost 100 inches in diameter and 116 foot spread. It's down here in Johnson County, just a fantastic tree. Here's the state champion, uh, Schumard Oak. It's 104 inches in diameter and 90 some feet tall, just a massive, massive tree, right down in Union County. And then also in Union County, our state champion, Pin Oak. Uh, 100 feet tall, 100 foot spread, and um, almost 60 inches in diameter. Just another beautiful tree. And I could keep doing this all day, just highlighting the pictures of the big trees. But um, oaks are definitely impressive. One of the things that people really love to, to see just because they can be uh, such uh, huge trees. But here's our species in Illinois. I mentioned we had 21 species, 12 in the red oak group. So black, blackjack, cherry bark, northern pin, also called hills, northern red, not all pin, scarlet, shingle, schumard, southern red, and willow. So all of those are all native to Illinois, um, at least parts of Illinois. And then our white oak group, right? So we have nine in the white oak group. So that's bur oak, chestnut oak, chinkapin oak, dwarf chinkapin oak, overcup oak, post oak, swamp chestnut oak, swamp white oak, and then our state tree, the, the white oak. So quite a bit of different trees, quite a, different, quite a bit of different species out there, but broken into those two groups, reds and whites. And while we do have oaks across the whole state, uh, the diversity of our oaks really is concentrated in the southern fifth of the state. So I put this map together um, a couple years ago and it's based on um, county distribution data for all the oaks in, uh, in Illinois. And as you can see, some of the, the northwest part of the, the state has, you know, four, five, six oaks per county. Um, a lot of the state has at least 10 or 12 oaks per county, which is awesome. Uh, and then when you get down into those southern Illinois uh, counties, those are that are right along the, Mississippi, the lower Mississippi, the Ohio, or even the, the Wabash, 
you really start bumping those numbers up and you see a lot of um, counties in that 15 to even 18 species range. And so really that's where the majority of our, our, our oak diversity lies. Um, and it's not surprising if you kind of look at a, a nationwide map of, of kind of large eco regions. And so Southern Illinois is really special in that it sits right at the intersection of four different major physiographic uh, regions of the U.S., right? So you have the coastal plain coming up from the south, and with it brings a lot of these bottomland oak species um, that just make its way into Illinois, like nut all oak and, and willow oak. But then you also get um, the Ozarks making its way over into Illinois, and you get things like blackjack oak and then some of these others. Um, and then you get influences from the east, so the interior low plateau, and that's kind of an extension of the Appalachian Mountains. So we get species like chestnut oak coming over from there. Um, and then you get, of course, the central uh, kind of lowlands or the, the, the prairie ecoregion and all the species that are there. And so you get this confluence of these four physiographic regions that all have um, different oak species that can kind of contribute to Illinois' diversity uh, of oaks. And even though we're really abundant, we're actually at the edge of a lot of these species ranges. So if you look at um, kind of overall species ranges in, um, in oaks, uh, there's nine of our species that are native to Illinois that just kind of we're barely at the edge of their range, right? So not all oak and willow oak, you can see just make it barely into southern Illinois and others are a little more so than that. But um, we're not at the heart of, a, of the range of, of many species, um, but thus a lot of our diversity is built up by this kind of being at the edge uh, of, of many different species ranges. And in fact, we have three species in the state uh, that, are list, that are actually listed. So two that are listed as threatened, chestnut oak and, and willow oak, and one listed as endangered. So that's not all oak, right? And so these are um, species that are so rare in the state that they're protected, um, you know, through the Endangered Species uh, Protection Board. But looking at oaks in Illinois and, and, and in the whole Midwest, it kind of really got their start right after the, the glaciers started receding. So um, uh, if you all remember, um, a lot of your, your bi former biology classes or geology classes, Illinois was mostly glaciated um, through a couple different glaciation periods. And, the, and um, the most recent one, the Wisconsinian glaciation started receding uh, you know, 25,000 years ago or so, and then kind of really started to leave uh, um, the area, you know, about 12,000 years ago. And so this came at a time when the climate was warming, it was drying, and then this ice sheet, this continental ice sheet as it receded, initially it was really cold, wet environments. And so we had spruce forest and, and, and other um, kind of more what we consider northern habitats then, but as the, the climate started warming, started drying, we really saw this shift away from uh, these kind of cold conifers and sp like spruces towards more deciduous trees and that the, the climate was more conducive for deciduous trees. And that's really where we saw uh, when we see oaks getting uh, a foothold here in Illinois it was around about 8,000, 8 to 9,000 years ago. At the same time, humans arrived on the Illinois landscape around that same time and brought with them, uh, you know, management practices and, and influences such as fire on the landscape that also helped to drive uh, our ecosystems more towards uh, towards oaks. And so in this this time period, we saw the development of uh, the tall grass prairies throughout uh, Illinois and then along with that savannas and and um, and, and oaks in other areas. And, and as the fires moved out of the prairies and into the, uh, into the forest, it drove uh, the forest more towards drought resistant and fire resistant species, which, which are oaks. And so now we kind of classify our, uh, our forest of Illinois into this, this broad uh, region called the central hardwoods. And so the central hardwoods region, uh, it's a region of North America where deciduous trees, deciduous hardwood trees dominate our forested stands. If you get farther south in the central hardwoods, you get into those southern pinelands. 
you get farther north, you get into those northwood habitats that are dominated by pines and, and other conifers. But this area here of the, the eastern United States does have some conifer trees, but they're really not dominant. Uh, these are, this region is really focused on, on deciduous hardwoods, and out of that, um, oaks are typically one of the most dominant components in the forest within the central hardwood region. So as you can see, that encompasses uh, all of Illinois, all of Indiana, and most of Kentucky, and, and a lot of other adjacent states as well. So in Illinois, um, if you look at our forest, uh, about 68% of those can be classified as well, what we call an oak hickory forest type. So that's a little over 3 million acres currently of, of oak hickory type forest in the state. Um, it doesn't mean that every tree is an oak, obviously, but oak, uh, oaks and hickories make up a significant portion of the canopy. Um, so you can see that um, they do make a dominant part of our, of our forest. And even if you look at like individual tree numbers wise. And so this is based upon um, some long-term data sets from the Forest Service where they do collection throughout the whole United States, but this is based on, uh, these are collections in, in Illinois. Uh, you can see by volume that um, there's three oaks in the top four uh, uh, most abundant trees in terms of volume in the state with white oak being the most volumetric wise, the most abundant tree in the state. So again, we have a lot of big white oaks is why, right? But also black oaks and, and northern red oaks are, are way up there as well. So very, very important part of our forest, very common, uh, lots of volume, uh, wood volume of oaks out there on the landscape. And they do occur in many, many different habitats, right? So on the left here, you see overcup oak, and this is um, growing right at the edge of a uh, swamp, Cypress Tupelo Swamp. So we have oaks all the way down into really, really wet environments, as well as oaks growing all the way into really, really dry environments. So on the right, you can see chinkapin oak growing in a uh, limestone glade, basically coming right out of the rock. There's almost no soil there uh, in that, uh, on that site, right? So very, very dry, very, very wet sites. Um, but in general, most of our oaks kind of fall into what we consider that mesic uh, um, ecosystem, right? So something that's not too dry, not too wet, just kind of typical forest. And so the, the vast majority of the forest in Illinois kind of falls into that, what we call an upland music forest. And that's your typical white oak, uh, shagbark hickory forest, right? And so it kind of looks like what you see in the picture here. That tends to be by far and away um, the majority of our forest and where we see a lot of our oak species. And over the last 10 or 20 years, there's been a lot of recognition on the importance of oaks. You know, we've always known their importance silviculturally and for timber, um, but the ecological importance of oaks out there is really, really becoming more and more recognized. And if you haven't had a chance to read it, uh, Doug Tallamy has a book out, The Nature of Oaks, that really talks a lot about um, North American native oak trees and how important they are um, ecologically. Um, so it's a great read. Um, definitely look at that really focused on oaks. And then there's other research. I really like this, um, this Forest Service publication, which is, which is free. You can download it about the, the guide to the immature um, caterpillars, but the moths and, and butterfly caterpillars that are found on oaks in Missouri. Right? So that's just one example. But just amazing numbers of different species that um, that can be found on, on oaks and, and utilizing oaks. And that really leads to the fact that oaks are, you know, what we consider a keystone species for our forested ecosystems in Illinois. Um, a lot of other species rely on them. They set the structure for our forest. They're the food source uh, for many, many species. Um, and so they really are kind of vital, critical components of our ecosystems. And just one example, uh, would, or a couple examples here, would be some research out there that shows that over 720 species of moths and butterflies feed on oaks in North America, and almost 500 species of, of wasp, right? And so that's just amazing numbers. And of course, those caterpillars feed our migratory birds like warblers and vireos that move through. Uh, they feed lots of other organisms as well. 
and just a lot of insects utilize like oaks. If you've ever seen the little hole uh, in an acorn, like you see in this picture, those are from weevils. The weevils will come in and lay their eggs in there and then um, grow inside the acorn and then emerge out, right? So it's providing food for lots of different insects. And in fact, oaks are, have been so critical and so important in Illinois uh, that we actually have an entire Oak Awareness Month established. So uh, October as, is renamed Oaktober because it is Illinois Oak Awareness Month. And so we, we want to highlight their importance to the state, highlight their importance ecologically uh, for wildlife and everything, kind of focused on this month of October. It's a great month to focus on them because the, the fall colors are out and, and um, you can really see the oaks out there. So this is just one of many events in the state uh, over October that highlights our oaks. So if you look at uh, eco ecology-wise, um, oaks fall into this intermediate class uh, in terms of shade tolerance. So a lot of uh, trees, trees get divided up on how, how well they can handle um, growing in shade. So there's some that are very intolerant that really can't handle much shade at all. And so that would be willows and cottonwoods and black locusts and so on. And that gradates all the way to trees that are very, very tolerant and can handle growing even in very closed canopy situations with a lot of shade. So sugar maple and beech kind of fall into that. Oaks are somewhere right in the middle in this intermediate class, which means they don't need full sun, uh, but they also can't tolerate a lot of shade to grow. So they are a system that's kind of in transition from uh, that, that dominates systems that are in transition from open to closed situations uh, or are maintained through kind of regular disturbance, right? And so oaks in general, even though there's definitely variation amongst the species, need a lot more light um, in the canopy coming in uh, to, for especially for their seedlings to be able to establish and grow. So 65% or so. So typically oak forest, uh, again, it varies quite a bit. Um, our open forest with a little more light in there kind of historically. And this was traditionally uh, maintained through both uh, you know, natural and, and human caused fires on the landscape. And these are systems that many of our oaks thrive in and they, they have um, well-developed root systems. They sprout following um, disturbance or top kill, being top killed really easily. And so this kind of level of disturbance, whether it's flooding or um, you know, wind disturbance or fire, uh, really does facilitate and allow oaks to, to thrive on the landscape. And so you see sites like this where uh, there's been the use of fire and you can see just uh, amazing amounts of, of oak seedlings established in there. In terms of reproduction and, and oaks, uh, in terms of how they how they reproduce, they are monoecious plants, and so monoecious means that they have male and female flowers on the same tree, but they're but they are separate, right? So monoecious means that they're all on the same tree, right? There's not male and female trees, but they don't have perfect flowers, which means they have separate male and female flowers, right? Um, and they look very different. We'll look. We'll show a picture of them here in a second. Uh, oaks are pollinated through wind. Uh, you know, through the wind. So uh, the pollen is spread around through wind and then just blows into and hits the, uh, the female flowers that way is kind of how they're pollinated. And as you know, with many wind pollinated species, that means they need to produce a ton of pollen to kind of make sure that some of it gets pollinated. Overall, oaks are typically self-incompatible which means they have to cross with another individual. So an obligate outcrosser. So the, the, the pollen from one tree typically cannot um, pollinate the flowers on that same tree. There needs to be some level of outcrossing, even though every once in a while that may happen. And then oaks especially are kind of frustratingly known for hybridization, where you'll get species mixing together um, from time to time. And that just really complicates um, identification out there on the landscape. But with so much pollen flying around so many different species, it's not surprising to see that hybridization uh, happens. So here are the flowers of oaks. 
Um, so on the right hand side of this picture, those are the male flowers. So they form these long kind of catkins uh, that just release the pollen out into the wind, right? And so that's no, no uh, surprise then that there's these long drooping um, flowers that can really expose their pollen to as much wind as possible. Uh, on the left are the female flowers. So you can see the pollen receptors up there, the little red stigmata uh, to catch that pollen. So those are where the acorns are produced um, on the left there, those female flowers. The right is where the pollen is produced. And so depending on if you're a red or a white oak, a species in one of those two different groups, your, your reproduction is a little bit different. Right? So they all use these similar flowers, and, and, and male and female flowers but kind of their timing differs quite a bit. So the white oak group, their acorns develop, mature, uh, and drop really in one season, right? So, uh, so here in 20, 2023, so the spring of 2023, a flower is developed, it becomes pollinated, that acorn starts growing, finishes growing, um, and by the end of the, the summer into the fall and then falls off the tree that same year in the fall of 2023. And oftentimes they'll, and they'll usually start germinating, the white oak acorns will start germinating in the fall after they've dropped and sometimes even on still on the tree. So overall for white oaks, there's about six months between when a flower starts blooming and the acorn that's produced from that flower germinates and starts forming a seedling, right? So about six months. Red oaks are very, very different in this case. So their acorns develop so that once the flowers are, are pollinated, they develop into a small immature acorn that sits there for that entire first season and then overwinters on the tree as an immature acorn. And then the second season, it matures and drops off the tree. And then after that, it sits on the ground for that second winter before it germinates the following spring. So there's about 24 months between the uh, initiation of flowering and that acorn germinating, starting to form a new seedling uh, in red oaks. So very, very different than white oaks, right? Six months versus 24 months. Um, so, and that's, it's, it's really interesting, the differences, but also if you look at it from a management side and somebody that maybe wants to maintain, um, you know, good food for wildlife and, and value in your forest it makes sense to have both reds and white oaks because you know a drought or some other kind of climatic event may impact um, this year's white oaks but it'll impact next year's red oaks and so by doing that you're kind of offsetting them and allowing some level of, of fruit production uh, food production every year so but here's just some pictures right so these pictures were taken just a couple days ago um, these are shingle oaks, and on the left is the first year acorns. So that's growing on this year's wood. So wood that has grown in this this season. So the new wood, and you can see there's a pair of tiny acorns. You can even see the little dried up uh, pollen receptors on the one on the right. And then if you go down a little bit on that same branch, you will find second year acorns that are growing on the two year old wood right on that same on that same branch so if you look at red oaks they'll have both um both age classes of acorns on the tree at the same time and in fact here's just a picture and you can see up top on the new wood that just grew this year you see the two little uh immature acorns already formed and then below that lower down on the second year wood the two the second two-year-old wood you see the mature acorns um, already growing on there. So you'll find them both um, on, the, on the trees at the same time. And I, I like this picture. Uh, this picture was taken in the spring, obviously, because it's flowering, but you can see uh, both the female flower over here on the left, kind of on new wood, male flowers coming out of these long catkins also on the new wood. And then um, on the, the second year wood that's just starting here in the spring um, you can see an embryonic an immature acorn ready there which will since this is the second year for you it'll go ahead and mature this year on there so you can see them all three in that same picture which is pretty neat i think so so that's just some real basics on on oak reproduction um, 